Yo, JD here. And as you can see, we are back on F1 22 today. And in this video, we're going to be showing two different races from the multiplayer, which I did in my open lobbies today. So again, thank you so much to everyone who has been joining them. It has been very chaotic, but very fun as well at the same time. And I've said this many times in the past, doing lobbies such as this is what really helps me improve at the game and really helps me understand the game much, much better. And that's exactly what we are going to be talking about today is how you can get faster at F1 22. And in this video, I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail on the specifics I'm talking about because I will be doing individual videos on each of these points. And if you really would like me to do that, then please let me know. And also like the video if you like videos such as this. And yeah, we're just going to go over quite a few points here, which I think you should be thinking about when it comes to F122. So the first one is learning how to trail break. And out of all the characteristics and the things you need to do in this game, obviously you have the steering, you have the throttle. But I think learning how to trail break is probably the number one thing that is going to basically immediately make you go faster. And as I said, I will be doing a video completely dedicated on this. I think here's a link to a video that I have done in the past where I have explained exactly how trail breaking works. But if you just do a short recap, basically trail breaking is where you are breaking 100% or basically the maximum breaking you want to be doing for a corner. But then as you're going into the corner, to slowly start coming off that break so going from that 80 to 100 percent down to maybe 15 or 20 percent and the more you're turning the more you're coming off the break and what this will allow you to do is, is that this will allow you to not lock up going into the corner this will allow you to break later and it will also allow you to get more rotation into it so if you watch my braking like even going through corners it's just as yeah, unfortunately, we, we were actually hit from behind. I promise you, I was hit from behind as we went into there, I think, by my teammate. But I think a good example of this, so if we go through this corner here and you go into this heaven, so if you watch my brakes as we come into this, see, the more I turn in, the less I'm on the brakes. And the throttle works in the same way, whereas it's the opposite. The less I steer, the more throttle I apply. So the more you're turning, the more you're coming off the brakes because there's a point where if you keep it on that same lock and you keep the brakes the same you will snatch a brake and that's when you will lock up but a lot of people don't realize is that if you can come off the brakes smoother as you're turning in and you have a better feeling with the brake then you're going to get so much more rotation with the car itself so learning how to drive a brake properly is absolutely the number one thing Number two, I would say, is understanding the setups. And I actually just released a video yesterday explaining how each of the different components work. And the setup I'm running for this video is my Imola TT setup, which I almost got the world record, was just a little bit shy. But I know that this balance works for me. And whatever works for you might be a little bit different where you might like a little might might like a little bit more of a pointy car or an understeer car but understanding how each component works and knowing what to change to get the desired effect that you want on the car i can't stress how important that is because like in the video yesterday a lot of people simply just take someone else's setup just copy and paste it and they just stick with it and they don't make any changes or if they do make changes they're just kind of shooting in the dark just hoping that it will give them the balance they desire whereas if you actually take the time to test and trial and error then you go realize that you're going to get to your potential much more so i would really encourage you to take the time in actually trying to understand each car component and exactly what it does so that you can then tweak it to the balance that you like and 
when you feel more comfortable you'll be driving faster you'll be driving more consistent and a lot of people you'll be amazed how many people don't even use the setup because they just don't even want to go through the effort of doing that as well and because a lot of people just ready up straight away and just put on the preset obviously using me using a setup here is giving me a significant advantage but the most important thing is that it's actually balanced to what I like not that it's simply just a setup if that makes sense point number three is take the time in actually setting up your game and what I mean by that is your camera settings your force feedback settings your button layout take the time in doing it and again there isn't really necessarily or right or wrong way in terms of setting up but just get something that's comfortable for you for me I'm able to see all the car here I can see the wheels very clearly the ERS button is very accessible to me and the force feedback the way I have my force feedback is it would be very difficult to drive with one hand but it I can actually feel when the cars go snap away so it's not super super heavy but enough where I can feel the car is going to snap at me but it's light enough where I can actually change direction pretty quickly so again a lot of people like the setups they simply just take someone else's even if it's a completely different wheel like this is a podium wheel maybe someone with a Logitech would try and take these settings and hope they'll get the same thing but I would encourage you again to really trial and error and take the time to get the camera settings get the wheel settings that you just feel comfortable with the game and what comfortable is is very different for each person so I would encourage you to actually go for your own settings because there's so many people who have completely different settings from someone else that they thought they would never use but just having that time to it just feels much much better for you and again it's something I just can't stress enough to just take that extra time you need the next point is you can see by this race here I think there's been a bit of a good example of it is managing your ERS and on F122 I think this is the thing that a lot of people are not really doing <laughs> at the moment because ERS is incredibly powerful all you have to do is just have someone behind you just spam the overtake button and they're going to be straight past you so it's very very tempting to deplete all of your battery but what I would encourage you to do is to try and keep as much ERS back as you can try and allow your raw pace to stay with the people up ahead of you because when someone runs out of ERS in front of you and you have a lot of ERS on board there is absolutely nothing they can do to stop you and you saw from that Emila race there no we used the ERS when we needed to to try and get within the DRS zone but we were actually quite disciplined as well saving that extra you know, 3 to 5% on that last lap against that other guy you can see how much of a difference that made going off the final chicane just having that extra 2 or 3% it, it allowed me to actually do the overtake and I know a lot of people always say to me well you want to try and maximise your ERS as much as possible I would rather win the race as efficiently as possible just in case something happens where you spin or you make a mistake or you have to unexpectedly defend or you pick up a time penalty and you're going to try and get out the two second or three second window I like to have a little bit in reserve as ammunition really uh, effectively if that makes sense so learning to be quite disciplined with your ERS I think is a huge huge thing in F122 whereas again it's very tempting because of how powerful and you can see here everyone is using the overtake button now and if i wasn't using this i would get passed by this alfa romeo here so just knowing when to use it itself and you can see we've managed to just get this overtake done now that's almost going by side by side of carl 24 who's a very good driver and you can see on the exit here we're going to use the ERS. so just knowing when to actually attack and be conservative because I felt like my pace was really good around this track I wanted to make sure I got the track position whereas uh, if this was in a 25% race or 50% race 
I'd probably be a little bit more inclined to just probably sit back and save the ERS, wait for the DRS, and yeah, just think about more of the long term of the race. Because I think a lot of people, when they're driving, especially in five laps or five lappers, they're just thinking about what's in front of them, not thinking about how that affects them at that time. So you can see here, we're not using any of the ERS to actually try and get within the DRS zone of this Ferrari. So we're just confident enough in our pace that we're going to keep it back. And coming up through into here, this very, very tricky section, making sure we're nailing this quite nicely. And you can see we are going to be within the DRS zone. And you can see on the exit this, this is where we actually do use it again. So just using it just a little bit just to build that momentum but you can see we've got almost a two or three temp buffer so making sure we try and get a good exit from here but yeah learning how to manage the ERS and being conservative with it is my number one advice but straight into my next point which is right on cue is learning from your mistakes as well and this kind of ties into my next point of playing all game modes, so not just playing in time trial or in career mode or just really kind of stuck in stone and like if you just played in time trial you'll be pushing 100% all the time. Play online and don't be afraid to make mistakes because when I play online I actually make quite a lot of mistakes and especially at the start of the game this is what is going to really really help me actually know where the limits are itself so don't be afraid to make mistakes and if you do make a mistake online when you're playing against a lobby such as this which i know can be quite intimidating for some people and i know not everyone here is always going to be the cleanest but i really encourage you not to quit as well really just try and stick it out to the end and you might actually even surprise yourself of how much you can actually come back into the race and all that's going to do is just give you that more confidence and you know next time i know this time when i come up into this top corner that i shouldn't be as aggressive on the power as i was before so kind of just embrace your mistakes is what i'm saying so if you do go off the track you do get wing damage or spin then stay in the race stick it out to the end it's as frustrating as it might be but really try and get that muscle memory down and that's, this is what I say when I'm attempting my world record attempts, which I'll be doing later on again in the game. Is that uh, I just kind of just keep on doing laps because if I just kept on resetting after the first sector every single time, then I'm not actually developing that muscle memory I need in order to put the entire lap together itself. So hopefully that does make a bit of sense. And it's something I really do encourage a lot of people especially in my coaching sessions when someone makes a mistake and they're showing me a lap i encourage them to not reset to actually keep going to really get that discipline and to learn how to actually just cope with frustration which you know i know i definitely get angry at times <laughs> in a league race or something like that but you know when i'm doing lobbies like this you don't realize that like, learning how to just kind of just really contain that frustration at times and knowing where the limits are really does pay dividends in the future as well and my final point really is to just be patient understand that things like this doesn't happen overnight as well it actually takes time to put all these into effect and yeah just being patient and you can see once again as you can see we actually got hit off by this guy which it wasn't intentional <laughs> but he did it by accident but no it'd be very easy for me to actually uh, quit the game here but i decided to actually stick in it in itself and just trying to make the best out of a bad situation and yeah i can't stress enough that how important this is and i think this is something that has really helped contribute to my consistency because i said i know there's times where i have definitely lost control of my emotions but quite a lot of the time i feel i'm able to keep that consistency because i know if you just keep on chipping away sooner or later it will 
pay off as well. And you can see we're just going to try and recover as much as we can from this. So being patient, I think, is a very, very big thing to remember. And I would say also the, the, the final point as well, it's just being smooth with all your inputs. You can see with the steering here, not having to be aggressive, just really being smooth. And if you look at the throttle as we come out of this corner, as we unwind the steering, don't go on full throttle until your wheel is in a completely straight line. So just making sure you be super, super smooth on your inputs. So I really hope those points have helped you out. I know they're not something in specific, I will be doing dedicated videos and things such as the trail braking. Already done the understanding setups video, but especially with the throttle, things like that. I will be doing dedicated videos on that as well, but I really hope these are little pieces of advice you can take into the game and to help you instantly just get that little bit better. So thank you so much. Thank you for supporting the videos and I'll be catching you very, very soon. Peace.